Hi everyone, talking about peppers today. I love peppers. Well, anyway, Corky's not going to be here today. She's not feeling well. So uh, you got me, you got me. So I know there's a lot of lives going on right now. So hopefully uh, everybody can watch, uh, go rewatch this whole uh, video because I love my peppers. So who do we have here? We have Rebel Canners. Welcome in, Tammy. You got Jane Doe. Wanda Moses is here. Thank you, guys. So people are starting to roll on in. So when people are starting, there's Serena. Welcome in, Serena. So I'm going to play our video, our six inches of soil, because it's very important in growing peppers, is those six inches of soil. So let's showcase that video. Six inches of soil. Six inches of soil feeds eight billion people. We already grow enough of all the human essential nutrients to feed everyone who's alive. Farming is the single biggest cause of biodiversity collapse, the second biggest cause of climate change. Soil is the most valuable resource on the planet, and we're degrading it without even realizing. We have come to believe that money is more important than soil. That idea has to change. Regenerative agriculture is farming, that we're producing food, but also farming in harmony with nature. You're working with nature, not against it. The more people see it, the more that they realize that it works. Having a regenerative agroecological system, that is surely the solution. Soils are absolutely phenomenal in the amount of carbon they can store. What we absolutely need now is urgent action from the government. Until you deal with nine retailers who have 94.5% of food sales in Britain, you're not going to have a level playing field. Consumers have a choice. They can decide to buy cheap meat from industrial farms, or they can find farmers that really value animal welfare and the environment that we're farming in. Dad started Regen Farming for the future generations to come, and that was the most selfless act he could have done. The people who are doing this are making big sacrifices. I think the potential is absolutely huge here. These farms really can change the world. It's all about the soil, isn't it, really? Yeah, definitely. Yeah. <laughs> so I'm looking forward to that uh, movie, and there's a whole bunch of other uh, movies starting to come out, which is really, really awesome. So welcome in, Tony. Uh, Tony just had his book come out. It's already, it's already rated number one, guys. Simply <laughs> Gardening, number one book right now. First day out. So congratulations to Tony. That is so awesome. And uh, we'll share the link later on in the live. And, uh, and Jane, if you could, sh uh, if you could uh, put out his link for his book, I appreciate that. I also made a video on it. Um, I checked it out, and I absolutely loved it. I absolutely loved it. So, and thank you, Juliana, for the video. I appreciate that. Did you know? Did you know? Did you know? Um, so here's Serena's here, Jersey Twister, Cindy Squirrel off grid, and Jay Dixon's here. It's good, so good to see you, Jay Dixon. Trusting God, it's the Marshmallow Man. <laughs> I love that name. Wanda Moses, our Georgia Suburban Homestead, built on a rock homestead, Jane Doe, Happy Mac. So people are in Rebel Canners, people are rolling on in. Mike K is here. I'm doing okay. I'm doing okay. Well, you know, we got a lot of sickness going around, and right now the norovirus has. Well, we I think it's the norovirus has a uh, quirky, so their whole family's not doing so well. So, yeah, they're not going to be here today. Maybe she'll pop on in. We'll find out. Who knows? Anyway, so uh, uh, Serena, um, I don't have it offhand. Um, but there is a, I have to look for my email because a whole bunch, it's shown all over the U.S. right now in a couple uh, places. Um, but I do, I do not have that offhand. Um, so, um, actually, that's not the movie. 
uh, Serena, you could. Um, there's another movie. Uh, it's called Common Ground that just came out. That's starting in the movies. Um, Hulu, you could find Six Inches of Soil. So, and thank you, Jane, for doing that. I appreciate that. Boom, boom. And how you doing, Rudy? So today we're going to talk about peppers. As you guys know, I love peppers. And the problem with peppers, this is what I found out. A lot of people, I can't grow peppers. I can't grow peppers. Then you have somebody, somebody oh, I grow in a pot. I grow in a, in a bed. And the reason why is because those roots need a place to go. And if you don't have the soil where the roots go, well, I'm going to show you that in a second. So I'm going to go to my presentation. So when I'm talking about the roots, here's a pepper plant, right? You got the flowers, leaf, fruit, shoot systems, right? And there's your seed from the peppers, blah, blah, and your primary root and lateral root. The problem with people when they grow peppers and their peppers get very, very small is because they're only grown. If you look by lateral root, that's only two inches of soil right here across. So a lot of people that grow in the ground or other circumstances right here all the way across um it just doesn't it, it you're not going to get enough energy to the plant where it wants to go you want to get those six inches so if you look by the stem here and a primary root and go down you have healthy six inches of soil where the microbes and everything go right to that plant that's what you want guys if you have the healthy microbes and go into those roots you don't even have to use fertilizer Microbes is what every, that's, that's how the whole system works. That's the reason why we don't want to use those fertilizers to kill and all of those uh, things that kill the ground and soil. You do not want that to happen. So let's see who's something. Um, 54 Cal, welcome in. Welcome in. Mike's Chaotic Gardening. B. Hendricks, thank you guys for all for coming. So that's the reason why we want the six inches of soil right there. And that's the primary. Uh, think about growing healthy, big, nice, delicious, bountiful pepper plants. So here's a little scale here. There's pepper X. That is right now, um, it's the hottest pepper. But that, that could be a little contested because, uh, oh, my God, I just forgot the name of the pepper. Primo. <laughs> Seven pop Primo. It's making its ways higher and higher right now through kind of back, backyard testing. So watch, for, look for that and get a little above here. And Jimmy Pickles now has a higher pepper than the Carolina Reaper. Another thing to look out for. So, um, and hopefully all that gets in the news soon because uh, Jimmy Pickles has been a friend to the show. And so it'd be nice to see Jimmy Pepper come right over here and right in front of the Carolina Reaper. But check out some of the names. Uh, Komodo Dragon, Affinity, the Ghost Pepper, Hibernero. Now, I love Hibernero's. Anything higher than Hibernero's, I don't know about that. I love, I could eat anything Hibernero or less as a pepper. Anything above that, oh man, I got to be careful about that. But I, I could dehydrate all these hot peppers up here. I could dehydrate the Carolina Reaper. And just don't think you have to do is tap a little bit, put it in a little salt shaker, and tap it how much you need, how much you could take. And it makes a world of difference. You don't get that heartburn. you know. So that's very, very important. Um, I have about 20 uh, salt shakers through uh, peppers right now. And they're going to climb uh, this year, believe me. Because each one, a lot of them have a fruity taste, which you guys don't even, like, you taste, a lot of people taste the pepper, like, oh, they're on fire. <laughs> Nothing's going to happen. So, uh, um, and they never taste the pepper. Well, when you dehydrate it, you have a better chance, a lot better chance to taste that pepper. And, uh, and you just have to adjust it to your system. So pretty cool banana names, right? Look at Tangerine Dream all the way down in the bottom for a little bit. Sweet Bell, Shishito, so Black Hungarian, all on a very low scales of peppers. And for me, I have jalapenos every single day. 
guess I'm a jalapeno man. Jalapeno. Um, so that's what's the peppers right there. Here's another Scoble rating unit with Carolina Reaper and a Trinidad Scorpion. So this is a little old. Just make it a little easier if you guys can see that a little better. Serrano is very well known. Okay, so let me stop sharing that for a second. I'll get back. So some of the sweet peppers I'm growing this year. I'm just going to show some of the sweet peppers. Now, I love this sweet pepper. This uh, Varsky pepper. Ooh, it's a perfect pepper, especially if you're going jalapeno Joe. <laughs> Oh, where is Jalapeno Joe? So uh, Jalapeno Joe, I had a, a friend of mine crocheted that for me for a Christmas present. And you guys have seen it in the lives. But he disappeared. I don't know where he went. My room's a mess. Anyway, uh, the uh, Varsky is an awesome, awesome sweet pepper. Um, very, very sweet. Then you got the traditional California Wonder Pepper. That grows pretty much everywhere. I love that pepper. Um, you could also get the Golden Cal Wonder. So if you grow in beds and you just like keep that bed and when it uh, peppers turn from green to yellow or red, you know exactly what you're getting when they when they become red. Uh, no serenity data. Do do not need cold uh, stratification. This is uh had bananas, so it's like a high banero taste, but it's not hot at all. At Horizon. Thank you, everybody, for coming. Uh, Jimmy Nordell, like putting those, put them on a grill quick, turn it quick, and boom. Uh, awesome, awesome, sweet pepper. This grows really well in New Jersey. The king of the north. And... You know what? This is my all-time favorite pepper right here. This is a sweet pepper. It's a legia pepper. See, they're big enough. So I love my omelets. Absolutely love my omelets. So this is perfect for an omelet for me. A little onion, a little pepper, a little mushroom. Put a little broccoli in if you want it. And uh, boom, boom. You got your lipstick. So these are just... Uh, Probably growing over a thousand sweet pepper plants. So, um, welcome in, Gold Sniping Farmer. That's your orange bell, Ozark the Giant. I wanted to show these picture these uh, varieties because you can see a picture of them. Sweet chocolate. Now, if you notice that date, twenty twenty two, that's fine. These peppers could last ten years. You put them in the right area, you're good. You might lose a pepper or two, but <laughs> that's about it. I'm talking about starting seeds. So that's just some sweet peppers. Oh, I got a couple more. A Chinese giant. And another frying pepper I really like, and they grow really long, is the Marconi Red. So that's some sweet peppers there. Hmm. Location. Where should I put this stuff? Location. How do I not lose everything? Um, I'm going to show you the pe uh, hot peppers in a second. Where I store these peppers? Mountain Grandma, welcome in. Um, I just put them in a box like this. And these are the ones I'm not using. But I will check it out. So I store these. Nice, cool place. Put that over there. And it's crazy the amount of hot peppers I have right here. I have over a thousand varieties of hot peppers, which is crazy. A thousand hot varieties of hot peppers. These are the ones I won't use. And that's almost to the top. So this year I'm doing more of a farmer's market. Or I just put them in front of my house. So Jersey Twister, come on over and grab some. <laughs> I just have a donation stand. And, uh, you know, see if I can make a couple dollars. A couple dollars is uh, very beneficial for me. So uh, so that's that's where I store my peppers. Let's show you some sweet uh, hot peppers. There might be some duplicates here. 
but I definitely want to go. I'll definitely grow in the hottest peppers, but I want to do. I want to definitely grow more of a jalapeno level, a uh, habanero level, and down. Um, so I just show them some peppers quick. These are not organized. Ancho pepper. I just grabbed them from my box that I set up. I should plant these. Uh, we got the Jay's Peach Boot Jaloki. Look at the shape of that. Pretty cool stuff, right? Oh, is this sweet? I have this under my hot peppers. Jigsaw. Now the jalapenos and that kind of level. Welcome in, Kathleen. I'll be growing about um, eight to 12 plants and a one's like the jigsaw. I will just grow one and I will be isolating several peppers this year with plans and selling those, uh, at, at next year. So that's the plan for that. Um, this is an awesome pepper, by the way, this is very prolific hot pepper, green, dark green, very prolific. This is the lemon drop. Then you got the regular poblano. That will sell very well in my neighborhood. So I will be growing like with that. Um, I'll be growing one of these. The puma. Then you got your paprikas, right? Okay, now these I'll be growing in sets of 12. King Puba, welcome in. Welcome in. Hope you guys are doing over, okay? Yeah, there you guys are in bad shape, and uh, I would be living on a toilet right now if I was you guys. <laughs> Who has next? Anyway, um, this I'll be growing. I love this. I love this in salsas, the pumpkin spice jalapeno. I love this. Very prolific. I will always be growing that. But along with that, you got the lemon spice jalapeno. I mean, the colors, guys. Just think colors. If you put a red jalapeno, right, with this, let me see if I can do this right. Just thinking of possibilities. You put this with the red and green jalapeno, mix them all in, and make yourself a salsa. Stunning, stunning, and very different taste for every single one. Every single has uh, every single one has a different heat level. And uh, so you kind of, yeah, spicy. Go spicy, Billy. Spicy. Yeah, like Gold Sniping Farmer. He's a, he, I, I, I had one of his hot sauces. I had a hair on my show. It was gone, gone, gone. <laughs> that was awesome. That was a great hot sauce called Sniping Farmer. So if you guys want hot sauces, check out Gold Sniping Farmer. David Gray, yeah. Uh, I like orange spice the best. What a great hot pepper, and it's not too hot. Definitely worth growing. What else do I got? Oh, the rainforest. I like the shape of that pepper. Look at that one. The Serrano. Now, I like growing. Boom! I like growing the seven-pot peppers, too. So if there is a seven-pot in the world, I'm grabbing it. I love how they grow. Welcome in, welcome in Riverdale Garden. So... Here's a seven pot chocolate. Disgusting looking. But dehydrated. So good. So here's some another seven pot. Seven pot yellow. No, Kathleen, I'm telling you. I, I had diverticulitis. I had a resection. I still get to get a hernia. I could eat this stuff. If you dehydrate it. If you dehydrate it. Um I would I would try to I would go I'd be big time right now if I could eat these peppers. I'd be on all those cracked up shows. <laughs> no, I I can't eat those peppers like those crazy guys. I'm a crazy guy, but I can't get that crazy. I'll get a colostomy bag if I do. Yes, yes, gold sniper and farmer. Uh the pot with scorpion made it made, made a very hot hot sauce. Definitely, definitely. Um so we also have the Sugar Rush Cream, the Sugar Rush Red. Now, what's interesting when you look at this, 
the Sugar Rush series. Look at the different. Whoop, 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 whoop. Let me do that. Different shapes and sizes, right? So I have no idea how they came with that. Uh, Serena, I don't have the chart in front of me. Let me see. Let me see if it has it. Seven lemon trap. Uh, Serena, I do not have that in front of me. Wine cellar, welcome in, welcome in. So what else do I have? Which, okay, so... Now this is an awesome pepper, and it's not as hot as all the others. This is really good pepper. The Sugar Rush Peach. Another prolific pepper. Uh, very good looking. Our Georgia Suburban Homestead. Boom! Thank you. <laughs> uh, Sugar Rush Peach. Awesome. It's awesome pepper, guys. You guys could grow this. And you guys could eat that. So, thank you, Jay. Thank you, guys. You guys are awesome. The Santa Fe. I, I believe this is a very underrated pepper. Nobody buys this. And uh, I like growing it. And that's grown great in New Jersey. Now, with the Hibernero, you also have the Sweet Bonnet. Again, I like those. I, it almost looks like a mushroom pepper. Then you get like the Tam Jalapeno. So that's a milder jalapeno. So if you don't like a lot of heat, well, jar that up. You'll like it. Then you got your thigh. Five red chili. Let me see what I got in my garden. Now, um, let me see. I think I have every seed company there is with hot peppers from all over the world. <laughs> Last year was a good year to get those peppers. Um, these are just from fruition seeds, and I believe they're located in New York. So Magnum Hibernero. Uh, fruition sees they're really good people there and uh, they definitely care about their products a mild tea paprika now this is pretty funny i think this is the 80 20. nope that's not it there's another one that's 80 20. oh here it is aha 80 percent sweet 20 percent hot so, you got to play a game with this pepper. Play a game. Play a game. You never know what you're going to get. <laughs> it's like eating jelly beans, those funny-looking jelly beans, right? Hold on. That there. Um, but I definitely have seeds from over the roll. I don't want to spend all this time going over what I'm growing. Yes, I did. I did order from Jim Duffy before, but uh, his name doesn't really go well with the hot pepper world right now for a lot of reasons. So I'm not going to go too much into that. In Cowboy Candy, oh, it's so good. Um, these are a whole bunch of more of uh, Baker's Creek and a couple other companies put in there. Put that there. What else do I got? Now, getting adventurous, I wanted to order hot peppers from Ukraine. So let's see. There might be a duplicate here. I just had them wrapped, wrapped up. Wrapped up. Chili pepper lishkaklika. <laughs> hey, Billy, can you pronounce these with me? <laughs> Mombasa. Chili pepper Mombasa. So that's, a, that's almost like a cow horn pepper. I say Tom Otillo. <laughs> uh, chili pepper octopus pit tree. Now, I don't know if you guys can see that. Look at that, look at that shape of it.
again, a whole bunch of different. Now, what's interesting, when you order seeds from Ukraine, they usually have a four-year shelf life. Well, it's a lot longer than that. But when you notice the seeds, and in the United States, it's only one year. But when you order from this company, they're four years. So they're good in 20 to 2026. 20, 93 germination rate, 93%. So a Jamaican bell. I'll show a couple more, guys. This is poison, Billy. Poison. 94% germination rate. Now, when you go into hot peppers, that's not the easiest thing to do. Hot peppers could take up to six weeks to germinate. Six weeks. And you're waiting. And you're waiting. And then all of a sudden, you're gr it looks like mildew's coming up on the soil. Or um, You've got to be very patient with hot peppers. Red Dominica. Now, I have grown this, and this is an awesome hot pepper. Almost like a high banero level heat. That one's seeds are in a way. <laughs> a couple more, guys. A couple more. Erpa Biber. This is a jalapeno level pepper. Let me get two more. This pepper, I haven't had a chance to grow well, and I don't know why. Chili pepper carous. Now, you got to remember, when you grow peppers and a lot of vegetables in Ukraine, they have a lot of, their temperature out there is, um, it's not conducive to a lot of diseases because there's very low humidity. So, you're growing these hot peppers, and there's no a lot, or a lot of other vegetables, tomatoes. They're not diseased plants, so you're not getting disease seeds. Some of these companies just want to put their um, seeds and just to sell seeds, and are, some of them are diseased plants. I want when I choose the best tomatoes or any kind of seeds, I want the best. You know, you're growing, you want to be healthy, you want the best, you want the biggest seeds. So if you save those seeds, you keep on doing it every year. You get bigger and bigger and healthier seeds because they're they adapt more to the environment. And uh, just a couple more, guys. This and my gardener, purple cayenne, cayenne. I an orange. Jamaican yellow mushroom. So you could buy these seeds at MI Gardener, the Serrano. So this is why I was telling you about the mushroom pepper. Look at the shape of that. Isn't that cool? My favorite level. My favorite pepper, I mean. Thank you, Jay. I appreciate that. And there's a whole bunch of more. It's not a, I don't want to waste my time. Um, you got more Jimmy pickle seeds. Now, with Jimmy seeds, they're isolated. So when they're isolated, you should get the true seed. So just let you guys know that. You know what? Let me go a couple of these. Jimmy's been great to the show. He was in a hot pepper series in Hulu, and we did a video with him. But he sells seeds, um, hot pepper seeds, and it's his uh, his foundation. It's his life. So, bubblegum red. A lot of hot pepper companies are not isolated. So, they had Peppergate last year. There was something called Peppergate. And what happened with Peppergate is a couple of farmers had the wrong seeds. And so they got distributed all over the world, and people were growing the wrong seeds. So they expected a certain pepper, and they didn't get it with something totally different. So they wasted the whole entire season. Thank you, Mods, for all the links. I appreciate that. You guys are great. Bulgarian carrot pepper. Brown jalapeno. I tasted this. This is very good. Again, look at the crazy looking shape of that pepper. 
Brazilian starfish, uh, starfish red. Pretty awesome stuff. And on and on and on and on and on. And there you go. Our Georgia Suburban. I have the uh, red starfish. So pretty cool stuff. So let's go back. Uh, uh, let's go back to my presentation. Let me just get a quick drink quick. So I'm a little dehydrated too. And well, this Monday I have my um, this coming Monday I have my colonoscopy. Just to let you guys know, isn't that fun to know? <laughs> and we have the parade. We have St. Patrick's Day parade in our neighborhood, which is one of the biggest parades in New Jersey. It's the Belmore Parade, which is twenty what's twenty minutes from me, so it's not that far away. And so that's a huge parade. It's people come from all over the Northeast for it. So, well, I'm not going to be able to eat or drink <laughs> or the night before either. But I'm going to be Ubering uh, Friday, Saturday, Sunday, try to make a couple dollars. So that's what I'm doing. So if you guys are wondering, Sunday's Sunday fun day on Garden State Gardener is going to start at 8 o'clock. Why? Because I'm Ubering. Welcome in, Victoria G. Uh, Victoria G, we're, today's peppers. We're talking about peppers, peppers, peppers. That's funny, Serena. <laughs> Why didn't you know that peppers are half peas? Six letters and three peas. Okay, let's go back to the presentation. And we're going to find Juliana's uh, video. Actually, you know what? Let me go back. I'm back. Um, starting seeds. Now, the biggest thing with me with starting seeds is just getting them growing. So you use a soilless mixed or... Just get your seeds. I mean, get your packets from this, a jiffy tray. Just a regular greenhouse kit. Um, I tried to use another camera, so my game plan today didn't work. Um, so with the jiffy tray, they come with a little greenhouse top like that. It comes with, I don't use this but it's a plant vitamin for seedings. I just want to get my peppers off to a healthy start, and then I'm going to be using a different special mix that I have never seen anybody use. So uh, I'm not going to show that today, but I'm going to show that in another video. Suspense, suspense. They also come with these labels, which I don't use either. Uh, what I do is I write the names down, on these sheets and I go by rows so if you see this these go by rows so row row one two three four five and so on so what I do say if this is the row right right here this whole row and so there's six of these one two three four five six so when I label I go one to six and write down a variety of my pepper I'm growing. So then it'll be seven, seven to 11. Did I get that right? And on and on and on, all the way down. And so the only thing I'm doing is I'm writing them down on my label right on here. And once I label, so, and I'm also writing down in a notebook. That's so important. Write it down in a notebook. And then it'll be that after you're done labeling everything and putting those in your notebook, you are using nothing's ever you where you want it. <laughs> Anybody have these problems? I use a tape and I make sure I put it all the way up to the top here. Make sure it's all the way to the top. And I'll have other videos on that. Yesterday I did my onion video. If you guys want to check that out, that is awesome. And now when you have these like this, all right, see how thin these are. These are very, very thin. There's nothing in them. This is a soilless mix. You should not get aphids or anything when you use this, okay? The only thing you're going to do, what I do, is use warm water. Again, this is not soil. You don't have to put hot, hot, hot. But use warm water. 
because seeds will germinate better when you use the water, a lot warm water than cold water. I get a jug, and the only thing I'm doing is here you go. Is I'm just pouring water in ever so lightly and trying to do this and not spill all over myself. <laughs> and so, if you see that, I'm just going back and forth with the water and just shake it up, move it around. And then I'll add some more, a little bit more water to it each time. If you want them so you want those to soak up the water. As you guys can see, I'm doing seed starting in a little bit. Welcome, Mr. and Mrs. Tomato Head. Welcome, welcome in. So after a little period of time, they come like this. And so what I do is I peel the outsides open to make it look like that. Look how big that got from the previous line. So these are 72 seeds you can start. Again, soilless mix. There's nothing in here. And so I'm ready to start my seeds right here. And then I'm after I'm done, since this is soilless mix, and I just want to, I plan to start my vegetables that way is I use peat moss on top. And if I want to add a little bit of worm castings, you could add a little bit. But I, I don't plan for these to be here after three or four weeks because that goes to a soil mix. Big, big difference. Uh, soilless mix is peat or cocoa core. And then you got your, um, that's what you want. That's what I like to use to start my seeds. And then I want to add stuff to it. I want to actually, actually add microbes to it, too. Because you have your microbes where your roots are. That's going to get your plant to a healthy start. And you want to keep on adding your compost tea and your microbes through your garden for the whole year. And that's the key. That's the key for a healthy plant. All right. You want those roots attached to those microbes. And this is just some peat moss. So this is different from onions, for what I started. This is how I start my plants, and if I'm going to transplant those. If I'm not going to transplant, then I'll do something different, because I do from this stage to another stage. So that's very important to know. Let me just put this. Let me add some more water here. Me, uh, I don't want them to stay like this all dry out. So I'll just hold on, guys. Hold on. Okay. Sorry about that. Okay. So that's how I start, and it's not that bad. Now, I'm also adding – I'll take care of our Georgia Suburban host. I take care. Um I'm big on microbes this year. So this is a microbe brew. This is from Fox Farms. And I'm adding your mycorrhizal content. And that's the product from earthworm castings, bat guano, seabird guano, uh, zinc, and so on, molasses, kelp. So when I get these microbes that go onto this plant, and you got a good start, and then all of a sudden then you're planting in this compost mixture with biochar, it's a great combination to get your thing started. Great combination for a healthy plant. And then it's like it's one, one reaction, one boom to another boom to another boom. And that's how you want your system to continue to grow. Uh, Jersey Twist, we're going to get to that in a second. Um, peppers take all varieties with that. And so the more time goes on, the more uh, you start off with temperatures, usually around 80 degrees, if you could do it. Uh, peppers germinate very easy with uh, hotter heat. And if it's cooler heat, it takes longer. So, um, okay. 
So let me get back to our presentation and I hope I can answer a lot of questions. So here's the pepper guide, the peppers, the Scoville units, peppers, pepper growing, pepper growing guide. So you guys got to learn a history of anything. I always believe in history. History is so important. Um, you should know where you, where peppers came from and what you're eating, right? <laughs> so the exact origin of peppers is debatable, but the possibilities have narrowed to Central and South America. The reason they are called peppers goes back to Christopher Columbus. Yeah, Christopher Columbus. Who knew? He found in natives of the West Indies grown and using very hot forms of capsaicin. Columbus assumed that they must be some form of pepper because of their extremely pungent flavor. The new spice, unlike most of the New World plant products, was an instant hit. Peppers were apparently adopted by other cultures immediately, and their use quickly spread worldwide. Cass Cass <laughs> Cassiums <laughs> excuse me, uh, were grown in Spanish monastery gardens. Who knew? By the end of the 15th century, and by the first half of the 16th, they had spread to Italy, France, Germany. It seemed likely that peppers were domesticated simultaneously and independently in several different South and Central America locations. The plants seemed to be have been under uh, cultivation by some time between uh, uh, 5200 and 3400 uh, BC. The capsiums show great diversity, shape, color, taste, and names. They are called ahi, chili, chilies, pimentos, peroni, or paprika. In writings from the early 1800s, bell peppers were often referred to as man mangoes or mango pepper due to association with pe pickled mangoes, the, the tropical fruit, being imported to the United States. In certain areas of the South, the name is still used. Most of the commercial, uh, commercial cultivars of capsaicin and anium include the sweet bell pepper, the red paprika, and pimento uh, peppers, a variety of hot peppers along with them, uh, them then familiar with jalapeno and New Mex, a uh, capsium Chinese, 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 <laughs> include the extremely hot, bright yellow, orange, habanero, scotch bonnet, and bird pepper. Capsicum, uh, fru frucians are the tepin, tepin, Tabasco, and cayenne, thigh hot and or ornamental peppers. There exists some 20 wild peppers of a species of pepper in South America, which which are generally have tiny red and very hot fruits. In 1772, the botanically minded Dominican priest Francisco Exmenez <laughs> wrote, wrote of a Cuban pepper so inflammatory that a single pod could render a bull unable to eat. A bull, guys, a bull. Who knew? These effects are due to a family of odorless but hot tasting chemical compounds known as capsi. Capcasins. I, I never could say that word, and I've been saying it forever. Bell peppers are tender, warm, vegetable vegetables which require somewhat higher temperatures than tomatoes. So for other kind of garden peppers like the bell, pimento, basco, tabasco, cayenne, chili, and paprika may be grown as food ornamentals. The United States ranks fifth in global production of green peppers, which includes both the chili and red peppers. China produces the largest quantity of green peppers, followed by Mexico, Turkey, and Indonesia. Indonesia is the larger producer and exporter of dry chili peppers. The top bell, pe bell pepper states in the United States is California, Florida, Georgia, New Jersey, Ohio, North Carolina, and Michigan. The top uh, chili peppers in the U.S. are California, New Mexico, Texas, and Arizona. Bell and chili peppers are consumed, consumed fresh, dried, grounded as uh, spices, and produce uh, such a process such as can. A pickled brine or brined or in salsas. Now, bell peppers are grown for both fresh and processed markets. They include varieties of traditional blocky, yeah, the blocky ones. That's the ones you like to stuff peppers, right? Uh, three to four lobe shape, as well as longer, more pointed varieties known as the European Lamayo types. Both hybrid and open pollinated varieties are popular with the trend toward greater use of hybrids. Hybrids have a high seed cost to control cost. Growers are use transplanted rather than direct seed. I definitely, with weather conditions, you want to start inside, start inside. 
you know, eight to 10 weeks, start inside. The hotter the pepper you want to do 10 weeks, just with your pepper you want to start eight. Open pollinated, open pollinated varieties can be either transplanted or seeded in the field. Common bell varieties uh, used for commercial use include Aladdin, Aristotle. Now, Aristotle is, I have grown at several times, and Aladdin. I also double up Polaris, Telestar, and Wizard, and definitely the X. 3R. I, I don't know as a wizard X3R. I know it's X3R. The name of you. Chili peppers compromise a wide variety of peppers and range in shapes, size and shapes. Some are small cherry uh, cherry like fruits, while others are conical forms of slender fruits up to eight inches long. Yeah, that's the long ones, like the yellow monster. Their flavor ranges from mild to extremely pungent. For example, Anaheim peppers are relatively mild, but while habanero peppers are extremely pungent. Pungency is associated with the presence of capsaicin, a color that is older, this alkaloid that is concentrated in the plant tissue. So that's where it is in the plant tissue, guys. And thank you, Jay. There we go. Capsaicin. That sounds better. You leave that there. I'm good. <laughs> I'm running my English language. It's terrible. I'm dry mouth like you couldn't believe, and I can't even say a word. <laughs> Common chili peppers. Shepherd groups and varieties include paprika pods, which are long, uh, dark red with little pungency. They're used for production of red pig uh, pigment and flavor. And jalapeno peppers are often harvested as green uh, fruit for fresh markets. And, uh, and redder is sometimes you get a little hotter, guys. A sizable proportion of the production is also sold to processors. Anaheim uh, or New Mexican or a long uh, synth. Centrical pepper, seven to two, nine inches long. They are also in the har they are harvested green for fresh use as well as canning. Red uh, dried pods are ground and used in sauces. Uh, yet wax or banana pe peppers vary greatly in shapes and sizes. They are yellow, usually yellow when immature and can be sweet and pungent when used fresh or for pickling. There are also many other var varieties, including uh, habaneros, poblamos, ahi, chilies, which are used in Tabasco. Uh, bell and chili peppers are warm season crops, as you guys know, sensitive to freezing temperatures. So once the freezing, it's gone. The plants die pretty fast. The ideal growing temperatures range from outside from 75 to 85, while night temperatures really helps with fruiting around 50 to 60 degrees. The plants can tolerate 800 degrees. But pollination, fruit set, and yield can be uh, negatively impacted. That's when it, uh, that's when it exactly the fruit set just drop off to the ground, which really stinks. And you so you don't get many peppers. So when you have those cool nights, that's when the peppers explode. Boom! So many, and it's pretty awesome. Many soil textures are used for bell and chili pepper production. Sandy soils are preferred for our earliest. Plantings because they warm more rapidly in the spring. Healthier soils can be quite productive provided they are well drained and irrigated. Again, you always want a well drained and irrigated garden in the first place. But uh, when you grow peppers and you, you don't have great soil, please grow in a bed or in a pot. Uh, for both bell and chili peppers, rates beds are more efficient since the warm. They warm faster, reduce space needed to grow vegetables, reduce irrigation needs, improve drainage, and provide greater weed control. Another reason to grow in raised beds right there, raised beds and uh, and pots. Just make sure the pot is big enough. You don't want to grow in a two or three pound pot. You want to grow more like a, a five. The bigger, the better. The five pound pot is good. Raised beds are spaced six feet apart, six uh, feet between each other. Bed uh, width varies from 30 to 72 inches with one or two rows per bed. Two rows works for me. And uh, plant space and ranges from the 8 16 inches uh, in each row. Where direct seeding, and I highly recommend you do, do not direct seed peppers because you don't know how long that seed could be there and you get weeds and all that stuff. Just start peppers in your pots or in a jiffy trays or any which way it just makes it so much easier to know what you're growing welcome in me and my shadow and there's helena m 33 people in the chat thank you for all for being here uh, peppers for fresh market are stocked for support particularly in fields of harvested harvested at mature fruit color 
that practices maximize early harvest and yields, which help compensate for high cost of land and water. Peppers grown for processing do not use steaks. Uh, peppers grown for processing do not use steaks because they're produced that way. They're just like, bam, they're trying to get them off the ground. They don't really care. You're doing a home garden, use a steak. You want them to go straight up as far as you can. Um, do I do that? No, it should cost money. But if you guys do it, get a steak. Um, mine are close enough and um, that they grow fine going up. They just go right on top of each other. Uh, typically, pepper is designed for pro and if they do bend, then get a steak. Uh, that's another thing. But just be, I, uh, you know, be money cautious when you do things. That's all. Soilborne fungal uh, fungal diseases can be a serious problem for growers. This is a problem when plants receive ex excess irritation or rainfall. Fumigation is used uh, used to control soil insects, pathogens, nematodes, and weeds. Okay. Let me stop right there. Let me get a break. Um, let's see, welcome in Feather Friends Homestead. There's Cindy Squirrel. If you guys want to enter those contests, winners get $100 that we have, guys. There's Doris the Cat. So we have six contests. Jane's been posting them. I don't know if Jay has or not. She, you guys are great. You guys are posting everything. But we have six contests going out through our, uh, our, our year. The only thing you have to do is say all in. You have to make three videos before, middle, end, and there's specific things you need to do at the end, such as weight or width under each video. So make sure you check out those uh, videos. Um, some really cool stuff we're growing. So six contests is Detroit Red Beet. You got the sunflower. Uh, you got the watermelon radish. Um, the zucchini, Dr. Witchy tomato. I mean, the six contests are awesome. Hundred dollars for a winner. Second and third get prizes. It's good to it's good to see everybody else contribute in a different kind of way. Where hey, you could be teaching us something too. So you never know who could grow the biggest. Okay, so we're gonna go to another video, guys. Actually, you know what? Let me follow what Julie Anna said. So just give me one second. Thank you, Jaja Juby. Are doing a video on don't you know don't you know and this is going to be on peppers so i'm really looking forward to this juliana has done an awesome awesome job um and as jay said you could also use branches i mean we're in a money conscious world where you know who has money if you do have money thumbs up to you god bless you <laughs> you use any kind of means you could if you just to mix Try to grow vertical. Okay. Did you know? Did you know? From Juliana. That's Jujaja Juby. Let me put the first put, it's thumbs up there. And here we go. Look at that beautiful picture to start. Did you know? Pepper edition. <laughs> Did you know that the Scoville scale itself was invented by a pharmacist named Wilbur Scoville? It's actually a highly precise and accurate way of measuring heat levels. And so you can actually tell if a pepper you've never eaten before is going to be too hot for you based on the comfort of peppers that you already know. Did you know that birds are immune to the heat of a chili? It's true. Birds will never enjoy the rich spice of a Mexican dish because capsaicin, which is the thing that makes chilies hot, only affects mammals. That's right. Birds, slugs, and other mammals are completely immune. From a survival perspective, this makes sense. Birds are what spread the seeds that allow the chili plants to grow. It's pretty important that birds want to eat the fruit, and a burning sensation would be a deterrent. Did you know that peppers are actually one of the first domesticated plants? People were farming chili peppers over 6,000 years ago in Peru and Mexico. This is one ancient cuisine staple we're talking about here. Did you know the chili pepper has a good first aid trick? Some keep powdered cayenne in the kitchen, not only for the great chili flavor in its own right, but also for its remarkably effective first aid tool. Without getting too technical here, the powder acts to equalize blood pressure, meaning it slows down the rate of blood is pumped out of a wound and will help it coagulate more quickly. In other words, it's more effective at sealing a wound than an actual bandage. Who here has seen these stoplight peppers in the grocery store? Did you know they're actually the same pepper? They all start out as green and then turn yellow and then eventually fully ripen at red. Did you know it was the same one? Did you? 
Did you know? Did you know that a chipotle and a jalapeno are exactly the same thing? The only difference is the chipotle is a manufactured by human thing. It is a smoked dried jalapeno, but it's no different than the actual jalapeno when they're growing in the ground. Did you know? When it comes to vitamin C, you might think oranges have the most, but in reality, chili peppers have more than double the vitamin C in a normal regular orange. Did you know? Did you know the hottest part of a pepper is not the seeds, but rather the thin white membrane in between the flesh and the seeds? Meet Peter Glazebrook from the UK. He grew the world's heaviest bell pepper, weighing in at 750 grams. That equals one pound, 10.4 ounces for a single bell pepper. Grow big. This is Big Jim, the supersized hot pepper that currently holds the world record for the largest variety chili. It averages a 14 inch length every time grown. Did you know? Awesome, Juliana. Thank you so much. That was awesome. Thank you, thank you, thank you. Now, just going to back a little bit. Oh, let's finish with our, a little bit about our history. History, history 101 for me. <laughs> I'm sorry, guys, about my speaking today. It's my lips are really, really dry, and I actually do not feel that great. So I'm mumbling a little bit, but I'm going to get through this, and hopefully I'll give, give you something that you didn't know either. Um, and get, Juliana, thank you so much for doing that. Okay. Oh, no, I lost my page. <laughs> see, I'm with it today, guys. I'm with it. Um, let me see. So bell pepper specifics in Florida, bell production varies by the area. Most of the state's crops is transplanted in raised beds and double rows that are protected with plastic sheets. Beds are usually fumigated before plant to manage for soil insects, pathogens, nematodes, and weeds. In other parts of the state and you and U.S. growers may not fumigate or use plastic sheets, depending on local conditions. Protected culture production products for bell peppers come in many forms, such as greenhouses and high tunnels. This form of production allows for grower uh, some control of weather events, pests, water, land use, pesticides, and fertilizer inputs. According to A.C. Nielsen data, peppers grown in greenhouses account for more than one-fourth of the total pepper sales with volume of sales increasing rapidly from year to year. Most of California's bell pepper production is ir irrigated using a drip irrigation system and to a lesser extent, furrow irrigated. Drip irrigation consists of a buried water line two to 10 inches deep while with either one of the two drip lines per raised bed. When furrow irrigation is used in other states, water is channeled along parallel trenches on either side of the raised beds. Water seeps into the raised bed to irrigate the plant roots. An overhead sprinkler is often first used to establish the seedings until they germinate. Bell peppers are one of the most heavily fertilized crops grown in California. Oh no, fertilized guys, remember that fertilizer in soil, hmm, California. Uh, soils are normally fertilized with nitrogen, potassium, phosphorus prior to seeding as a side dress or through growing season by drip irrigation. And I don't like, we've been growing so wrong for so many years where we feed the plant and not the soil. Um, and higher, seems like the higher fertilizer goes up every single year. Nuts, crazy. Um, well, thank God we're going to hopefully be on the right. Oh, thank you, Jen. Um, hopefully we're going to be on the right path of growing healthier vegetables now. There's so much science, but it's kind of getting held back. Who, who knew that healthy, trying to grow healthy plants will get you trying to grow the wrong way. But anyway, uh, chili pepper specific pros use a variety of methods to plant chili peppers, including direct seed and transplant. There are a host of hybrid varieties which uh, promise higher yields. Typically, chili peppers are grown as double rows on raised bed, 6 to 72 inches apart, with plastic seed covering the beds, buried in drip irrigation. I'm going to move on a little bit here, guys. 
Uh, chili peppers require moderate amounts of fertilization. Uh, most growers apply nitrogen and phosphorus for a plant that can last throughout the entire growing season. If additional applications are necessary, side dressing or water soluble applications can be added to a drip irrigation system. Side dressing allows the nutrients to leach through the soil to reach the plant's root systems. In the United States, bell peppers are produced and marketed year round and mostly sold as fresh produce. California is a lot of stuff on California because we're one of the leaders in this stuff, isn't it? So, hmm. California shipping season runs, runs through April to December with peak volume from May through July. And so, for example, Florida shipments run October through the following July with peak volume between March and April. So know where your food's coming from. And when you're in a store, you should have seen where everything's being grown. Processing peppers used for freezing or dehydrating provide a secondary market for bell peppers. Uh, fields of fresh market produce are Harvested by hand every week for over four to six weeks. Nearly all peppers are harvested by hand and packed into bulk bins or trailers for transit to a packing house. So I'm just going through here. Chili peppers designed for the fresh market are harvested two to four times at 10 to 15 day intervals. And that's what I basically do for, actually I do a little closer together when I do my market. In front of my house. Um, while peppers designed for processing are picked once or twice, many chili peppers are harvested green before the development of the mature color, which is insane. That's the reason why we need to, you know, have our own, grow our own, and, you know, support our local farmers. However, some chili types, such as paprika and anaheim, are harvested in the mature red color. That's what you want. You want uh, something mature that's grown right outside by your house. Um, there are many industrial uses for red pigment that paprika pos uh, pos uh, possesses, such as food coloring. A large percentage of chili peppers in California and New Mexico are harvested for processing into salsas and canned whole. So I know I'm going through this fast, guys, but just want to get some main points here. Chili peppers are processed or packed into bins and transported. To process the plants for canning, burning, uh, freezing, and drying. Blah, blah, blah. Okay, here we go. Field teat is removed to improve post harvest quantity. Peppers are cooled before shipment to storage, either by hydrocooling or by forced air. Again, things that nobody really knows. Peppers are sensitive to chilling injury below 45 degrees. Typical transit and storage conditions of 45 to 55 with high humidity of 90 to 95. Fresh market chili peppers are cooled by forced air methods. Ideal storage and trans transit temperatures range from 45 to 50. When held at proper temperature and humidity, storage life can be extended by two to three weeks. Chilling, chilling damage can occur if temperatures drop below 45. All peppers are sensitive to ethylene-producing fruit, such as tomatoes, avocados, and cantaloupes. Exposing or stored peppers with these other fruits can hasten uh, shelf life. Cultural uh, practices, bell peppers are tender, warm-season vegetables that require somewhat higher temperatures than tomatoes. Peppers have all the disease and insect problems of tomatoes and should be treated the same way. Planting, planting time peppers are best started from transplants. That's how we started. You know, let me go back. I want to go back to this. Number 14. I can't remember number 14. So, and better feel better, Serena. Yeah, sickness is going around all over the place. So, hope you feel better, Serena. So, got some notes here. So, seed starting, right? So, you guys notice. Let me see. I hope they don't fall out. So, I just poured these in with water. As you guys saw, and that's what they look like. And they look this big. I always love that. Now, see this top? I peel it back. I, I peel it back. So let me show you that. A lot of you don't have to do that. But if needed, I always could add some other kind of uh, peat moss with uh, with worm castings on top if I need that. 
So one thing I'm doing is ripping this part. Let me put a piece of paper here. So I rip it apart like that. Oh, that was terrible. I know you didn't see anything. And that looked like that. So uh, pretty simple. And then I I got a, I use a, a screwdriver. And I just go like this, turn it a little bit. And it makes my little hole. So basic. And don't bury your seeds too deep. Um, especially the hotter the seed, you don't want to bury as deep because you want that sprout up. So that's a couple of keys. Um, if you're growing hot peppers and you're starting to make sure you try to use a seed mat. And uh, so I got some notes here. So once your seeds have sprouted, you can uh, reduce the temperature to 70 degrees. So once they sprout, you can reduce the heat mat down. And make sure seedings are getting between 16 uh, 14 to 16 hours of light. Whoa. <laughs> uh, grow light should be 7 to 12 inches um, above your where the leaf is. Not too low, not too high. So 7 to 12. I generally go around 7 to, seven to 8, somewhere around there as much as I can. Uh, don't over overwater your pepper seeds. That could cause them to rot or cause damping off. The soil surface should dry out slightly between uh, between waterings. Um, you also want to avoid plastic covers as they can as those cup containers. So once they sprout, take it off, off, gone, because they can retain too much moisture and a plant environment for uh, hot pepper varieties. I try not to use any uh, fertilizer. Uh, of any kind of like hard graduated kind um um because that could create mildew in your plant including chicken manure if you do seed starting that way so do not do that if you do anything use a very uh a liquid form of fertilizer if you plan to do that and that will cut down on your mildew and diseases um once you could also if you have those gnats flying around I'm going to try something new this year. I need to do a little more research. I wanted it done before today, but I didn't see one person that did this. Now, to try to uh, cut down on fungus gnats, all right? Fungus gnats are always near your plants when you do this. Anytime you use a soil, not a soilless mix, a soil mix, you're going to get gnats, all right? So you have those little gnat traps going up. But if you top your plants of perlite, let me see. Perlite or you know, I learned a little bit about this. This is vermiculite. Now, the one thing about vermiculite, the old form used to hold asbestos. Okay, so. Um, with asbestos, you don't want that. No. <laughs> Who wants asbestos? So run. It's like Billy said, run. But this is different. It's horticultural. That will not contain asbestos anymore. The old kind, yes. So what I do is I use a one-third mixture of vermiculite, perlite, and it should be sand. All right? But instead of using sand... I'm going to use green sand. And a re reason why green sand is because it doesn't really do anything for the plant until like the end of the, it doesn't go, it does, it's not being used until months and months after. That's what happens with green sand. So like, for example, my potatoes, I used all that green sand last year. Well, it's supposed to help, but not really. But the next year it would. So it's just something, you know, um, that I learned. But I want to use either, I want to see if I can use green sand because maybe by with my peppers, by the very much at the end of the season, all that stuff's going to be useful and you get better, sweeter peppers. That's my plan. So just a something something new. And as, uh, let me see, Mrs., Mr. and Mrs. Potato Head, um, 
I use sand lash for my pepper plants that work great against fungus gnats. Yeah, sand works really good. So without a doubt, a hundred percent. So I really want to try to green sand though, which is it's I have it somewhere. <laughs> I want to try to use green sand and see if that really, really works. Mike's use uh peroxide. There we go. So just a couple of little things about that. But I think green sand, I just want to make sure it's not going to ruin anything. And I really don't think so because it's not going to be used for months and months. So why do not why people have not done that? Probably because it's expensive. <laughs> but I'm looking long game here. So um, let me see. So water plants when lights are off. That's a key. What are plants when lights are off? As what are uh, droplets created? Magnify, magnifying effect with the light and can be used to burn a foliage under the water droplets. It could happen. It could happen. Once your seedings have reached a height of two, uh, at two inches, it's time to start fertilizing. So it matters what kind of fertilizer you want to use. I try not to fertilize much at all. To me, um, when it comes up to this, okay, this is a little different because I'm using a soilless mix to start, right? Soilless mix. You're not going to have those fungus gnats. But once it comes to two inches, that is when I do a topping of like worm castings, back guano, you know, little things like that. A little fertilizer, organic fertilizer. Um, but as in like uh, back guano and things like that. And then I top with other stuff, such as perlite, vermiculite, and sand. So everything's covered. My whole tray is absolutely covered. And I've, I've been doing that for a long time. Um, so I get less disease and little aphids. My wife will kill me if I had an aphids all over this house. <laughs> um, okay, so start with, uh, here's another note. Start with a half strength solution of liquid fertilizer when a water uh, when you water once a week until the plant reaches four inches in height at which time you could switch to a more of a well full strength liquid fertilizer and for me i don't want to use any fertilizer at all but this is notes for the most of you because you guys need to you know use it that way you need to use fertilizer for the plants to grow um and garden state so and so asbestos naturally occurred in our ground soil and i don't want any more of it exactly i mean we really got to improve the soil guys and i'm telling you so much easier with the information that's out there today and wait till you hear next week's live shows it's gonna be pretty cool uh we got when you're talking to executive assistants instead of people to get people for interviews these are the people you want to listen to they're important <laughs> they're very important um, Jay Dixon, just dis discourage fungus gnats. I use boiling water and keep uh, keep the cupboard container somewhat insulated. And D says we don't have gnats. Okay. So best potting soil for peppers. And as I said before, uh, soilless mix is always a good way to start. But after the soilless mix, when you transplant to pots, you know, I want more. I always want more, 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 more. Um, I want the microrhizal. I want the uh, the microbes. I want I want stuff to get into the plant. All right. And I don't. Let me see if I have another pot. And you can use solo cups or something like this. All right. This is a pretty big. Uh, this is not bad at all. This is pretty good size. But I for a cheaper. The cheaper solo cups are cheaper than this. And what I do is, again, I label right here. So um, everything I do is with these labels. Label it here and make sure you put a piece of tape over it. And write it so you know exactly what it is. And also write it down. That's always important. Also, you can use, if you have mats, you use ground cinnamon. And as you can see, I have used that. This is what year is this? 
Oh, it's still good to December 24. Eh, pretty good. I took this for my wife. <laughs> Hope she doesn't know it's gone. <laughs> um, when I'm also doing my pepper plants, when I'm outside, so when I'm doing these uh, planting these, not planting them, sowing these seeds, I'm also writing on labels. And so, for example, Trey 11, Trade Winds, Sandia Pepper. So I know exactly where I got this pepper from. I have used this. This is my third year I have had this. And look, it's not, it's perfect. You can't beat it. I mean, yeah, I got a little rusty on one side. But I'm not labeling anything. I throw this next to the plant. And uh, I get these at the dollar store. So that's a pretty big label. I'm walking around. And I know what I'm growing. Um, if you, if uh, I need a bigger label. Yeah, I'm blind. Look, I'm blind, Billy. I'm blind. You can get one of these for a seed sower right here. I haven't opened it up yet. I just like tapping. And if I get a couple extra seeds in a pod, hey, it's all good. Seed saving. I like saving my seeds in these. So let's see what I have here. Like this is ah Ahi, Colorado. Nice and easy. Scotch bonnet red. So these are easy. You twist on off. And there's your seeds. Nice, easy stores. Uh, Jay, why, why the huge signs? Because when I'm walking, I just put them next to a plant. And they also, when you have the bird, uh, they just they help a lot for me. I, I when I'm filming or something like that, or um, I'm just going around my plants. I'm not looking deep down to see what I'm growing either. The, they're right in front of me. They're nice and huge and blocky, and I'm go I'm I'm losing my sight. <laughs> it's just it's just so much easier. It's so much easier. It's cheap. It's one dollar, a dollar well dollar twenty five. So for a dollar twenty five, to me, it's a great find and i have it all i'll never have to get rid of it never have to get rid of it which is pretty awesome um so for the peppers for they like a ph between a 5.9 and 6.5 summers in there oh why you might not be able to test for this it's good good to know that the peppers love a slightly acidic soil uh peat moss or cocoa core based soil uh, um well, a low quantity of potty soils or sandy will, will also issue like retaining fertilizer, like um, pre charged with organic fertilizer with beneficial activity. Um, I still like using trifecta with everything. Or if you guys have problems with insurance, try to use something, you know, even 555, five, five, you know, something kind of balanced. I like balanced fertilizers um, if you're using fertilizer. Uh, just let you guys know, um, uh, not this Sunday, next Sunday, we have uh, Jerry from Butler Family Farm. Well, he did that for a living uh, with fertilizer. That was his livelihood. So we're going to have somebody talk about peppers. I mean, uh, fertilizer, not this Sunday, the following Sunday. Because I want all ranges. For me, I'm not using fertilizer. So as in uh, everything I'm using is organic fertilizer, not other fertilizer. So, just something to know. Uh, Serena says, now my roommate has COVID and ha uh, and she has MS. Well, prayer, Serena. Hope that uh, hope everything works out. That's that stinks. Hopefully, you make through it pretty well. Um. So we're talking about fertilizer next Sunday in Garden State Gardener, and again, you agree or disagree, it doesn't matter. It's all good. Just listen, have some ears. And we'll do what works for you. Be sure to want to eat your own food. So whatever you guys want to do, your three, two, one, or regular fertilizer, or five, 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 or whatever, you got to do what's good for you, your health, and what you want to do. So that's the most important. Um, 
And for me, I just want to grow it. If, just, if you treat the microbes and you're putting compost in the garden, you really don't need any fertilizer. So get those six inches of soil. Then you're good. Get your worm castings. There's your fertilizer. Another thing, use chicken manure. Perfect. Rabbit poo. Boom. Rabbit poo is uh, great because you can just put it down and you're set. Um, it, it's very adaptive. It's right to the, uh, right to the soil right away. Um, right to the plant right away. But I still want to come up to keep the phrase going, feed the soil, not the plant. Feed the soil, not the plant. So that's pretty good stuff. Um, let me see. Look at my other notes here. Hey, let me just get a uh, let me do another video for you guys and we'll finish up a little bit here. Sorry, I'm all over the place uh, today. Um, this is Common Ground. So, this is the movie that's just starting to come out in the movie theaters or some movie theaters. So, I want to hope you guys check this out Common Ground. <laughs> A new documentary is launching a movement to change our farming practices and restore our soil. I'm excited to share with you all common ground. This is the single most important story of our lifetime. Now we have the ability to literally stop climate change in its tracks within less than a generation. This film actually proposes a solution they could actually bring the entire planet to carbon neutral. This is a crazy concept. This is insane. Common ground needs to be seen in the White House. We couldn't not make a second film after Kiss the Ground. I mean, it was a runaway success. The film is a love letter to our children, all about how we can save their future, but also make sure that the world is thriving for all future generations. We have to come together and find common ground for common good. How was the film received? Sold out Hot. screening. It's probably one of the most important films you can see this year. Go watch Common Ground best movie of the year. It is a movie of our time and the next generations to come. This movement is catching on like wildfire. What should I do next? Go see Common Ground! So that's common ground. So, um, you know what, Miss, Mr. and Mrs. Tomato Head? Um, I wonder if we could do something in New Jersey. Hmm. Um, I wish I had more time in my life because I could talking to people there a little bit. And if I could get a movie theater, we could probably showcase something. And have our own event. Just something, putting something out there. Um, which is pretty cool. And have a screening. Um, and we could control the whole thing. Which is pretty cool. <laughs> Happy uh, Mr. and Mrs. Tomato Head. Uh, they are from North Jersey. And I'm from more of the Jersey Shore. South Jersey. Central. Well more South Jersey than Central Jersey. I'm in. So we'll talk about that then. Yes, that'd be pretty cool. That'd be really, really cool. And uh, she says, I'm in. Wow, this is pretty cool. Um, yeah, we'll talk about that then. And Because if we can get a movie theater to do that for us, um, that'd be fantastic. Um, just the soil is so important, guys. We've been fertilizer. I'm going to have somebody else on my show. Not next week, but in the month of March. That they lived. Um, oh man, I really don't want until I confirm this. I don't want to give anything away. 
Um, some things are really well in the works. And I can't really say 100% <laughs> that the date's there yet. Oh, my God. But this person was, grew up next to a fertilizer company. And they that's how they gardened. But as the person got older, well, they started real, they started learning stuff because people get sent to each other with arguments and stuff like that. And uh, now he's all organic, which is pretty cool. But he re everybody's realizing that fertilizer is not good. And it's from Russia. <laughs> Most of it's from Russia, by the way. Um, so please try to get away from using fertilizer. And I understand if you're just learning about this, to not do it this year, but start adding compost. Start adding that to the soil. And you're got, you guys' minds are going to be blown away in some of our interviews we're going to have this month. Um, next week, we're going to have someone talk about cover crops and cover, cover crops... Um, one second, Jane, uh, Serena, I'll get to that. Uh, cover crops is the biggest thing going in right now and are so important. And, uh, you want to cut down weeds, start cover crops, but that doesn't start into the fall and Ris Riverdale gardens, compost, compost, compost. Also have another interview starting to get set up that some information is not getting told how to garden correctly and because the government doesn't want you to grow that way. I, can, I can't really say anything more before I get in trouble. Um, but there's ways to grow certain food and it all talks about the microbes to grow bigger nutritious vegetables, a lot, less, a lot less diseases. And again, it's all about the microbes. So, which is pretty insane. I'm blown away myself, but I can't get myself in trouble right now. Uh, so Serena goes, are membership fees monthly? Uh, Serena, they are monthly, Serena. Uh, monthly, they start at $2.99 and they go all the way to $19.99. And that money goes directly to, uh, directly to like sending out seeds, to buying seeds. Uh, we don't, we get some seeds donated. But not a lot. But we are going to give away seats today. Um, just to let you guys know. So stay with me. Um, we are giving away seats. But uh, yeah. So we have five members right now. Three, um, postage. Postage is going way up. And we don't deny anybody from growing from across the world. So um, if I can get it sent to you, I'm going to send it to you. So that's the way I look at things. I just want people to grow. And welcome in, Connie. There you go, Riverdale Gardens. I tripled my compost bins in the last couple of years. And D, I plant, I'm, I have marigolds planted everywhere. And if anybody didn't miss out, Tony's book right now, Simply Gardening. Uh, it's Tony O'Neill. His book is number one in one day. And where he's going to be a part of our live in March with I, what I call a fearsome foursome. But I'm not going to go more to other names. But we're going to have a, something called the fearsome foursome where we have four, a group of four popular people in a, in a gardening world. And we're going to be doing an interview, uh, roundtable discussions on things. Wait till you see some of the people we have lined up. That's going to be awesome. <laughs> so that is going to be really cool. Congratulations to Tony. Um, that is really, really cool. Oh, look at that. Whoop. May 16th. That is awesome, Jay. You are awesome. Well, you know where I'm going to be on May 16th. I did it. Where's the calendar? Where's the calendar? <laughs> so, oh, that is awesome. 
I looked for that today, actually, and I didn't see it right away. I don't know why. That must have been on somebody else's page instead of their site. Thank you, Jay, so much. But Mr. I can go to. Well, I want to see if me and Mrs. P Mrs. Potato Head <laughs> could actually do her own and get another go to another movie theater. And a lot of those Asbury Park, I know that's uh, down in Jersey Shore. They usually allow those kind of things in certain venues if it's still open. Wow, hmm. got to do my research. And there's one in Bradley Beach too. Ugh. Okay, let's finish up here, guys, and we're going to give away some seeds. I know it's a little different today. It was kind of... Uh, Corky is very sick. Otherwise, she, really, she would have been here today. I'm trying to find out where I was at. Let's start with right here. Uh, apply supplemental fertilizer, side dressing uh, cautiously only after a good crop of uh, peppers is set at two week intervals. Do not get fertilizer on the leaves. No. Uh, gardeners do more harm than good by applying too much fertilizer. That's important, guys. If you, you're using fertilizer, please do not add too much. You're not, more is definitely not better. Definitely not better. Irrigate during uh, dry periods, so that's important. A uniform moisture supply is essential throughout the harvest uh, season. Many gardeners train their pepper plants to, to stakes or trellises with great success. Using one stake for every four plants, the gardener can support the plants with uh, one string tied about 15 to 18 inches above the ground. So that's a cheaper way to go, too. This prevents a plant from tipping over with the wind and rain. All varieties are not uh, equally suitable for staking. Insect and disease control peppers have the same problem as tomatoes do in a garden and should be treated as such. Okay, guys, I'm going to stop reading that. I know I had 21 pages, but, you know, I had enough today of reading. <laughs> I'm going blind. I really don't do not feel well. Um... So let's give away some seeds right now. Well, I'm going to show you another some individual videos on seed starting and stuff with each and every single vegetable and how I do things. Oh, thank you, Jay, for sending that information. Let's uh, let's go to the comment generator. The giveaway tool. Let me see. We're going to put in J. Jane and see if anybody gets to root it up. Because <laughs> I know I would. So it's going to be, I'm going to show you right now. These are to win some seeds. J and Jane. Or J. Jane. J. Dixon and Jane Doe. So, hope you guys can see that. Type that in, in guys. One second. Um, there's 18 entries, 19. Uh, Serena. No, they, they do not need uh, stratification. JJN. No hashtag, just JJN. JJN. Wait, that's two of the best moderators ever. Look for a pen here. J. 
geez, never gonna find a pen when I want it. So you again uh, make sure it's just JJ, no hashtag. Exactly the way it's shown. And you're gonna win some seeds from and my gardener or Mary's heirloom seeds. First winner. Let's draw it. There's 38 people in the chat, but 22 commented. That's all I got. First winner. Me and my shadow. Congratulations, me and my shadow. Second winner. Who's going to be winner number two? 38 people in the chat. Jersey Twister. Make sure you guys email me right away so I get these out. I might actually get them out tonight. I know I'll get them out tomorrow morning because I get it. I started these packets. Uh, I got to start my seats tonight. Third winner. Victoria G. Congratulations, Victoria G. Thank you, Mods. Mike's Chaotic Gardening. Mike's Chaotic Gardening. Congratulations, Mike. Who's going to be the next winner? Jane Doe. Congratulations to Jane Doe. And our last winner. Miss, Mr. and Mrs. Potato Head. Congratulations, Lauren. So that was pretty cool. So congratulations to the winners. That's pretty awesome. Make sure you guys email me your address so I can make it nice and easy. Thank you, Serena. And uh, that was awesome. So congratulations to those winners. Um, also, um, I put down below, and Quirky and I will split anything that's mailed to us. If anybody want to donate it to the channel, we got a Venmo PayPal down there. And that goes directly between both of us because we split everything 50-50. And uh, every little thing helps. Um, I know Garden State Gardener, we have we do have a lot of subscriptions there. And that goes directly to mail them. Uh, last year, we mailed out over $8,000 worth of prizes, which is pretty crazy. So... Um, and here we got to lessen things up a little bit because, well, I got a family support. And if uh, I don't do things correct, I will end up not doing it here anymore. <laughs> there, there won't be any sharing at all for anybody. So uh, I got to make sure it's profitable on my end because uh, we're not in a great situation. So I got to make sure at least it all evens out some kind of way. Or if not, make some money. So, <laughs> and believe me, you don't make a lot of money on YouTube. So, uh, the money you make is, it's worse than a coach's salary. <laughs> um, let me see any other questions. So, uh, I'm sorry for the short kind of brief way. My stomach is really rolling right now. Yes, Jane, next week. Good question. Good question. Eight o'clock. Our lives get turned to eight o'clock now. And the reason why is because when I come home from work, if I come home from work, I need to be outside once the sun's still out. And so if I started at seven, um, if I started at seven, it's not I'm not going to be able to work in a garden. So I really need to uh, get out there. And an extra hour helps for me. And uh, probably you guys, too. It will help you guys in your garden that you don't have to be on. And it seems like when we go to 8 o'clock to 9 o'clock hour, that's when we get a lot more people watching our channel. Um, don't know about 9 and 10 yet, but our 9 o'clock to 10 o'clock, 
is really good too. It it really walks on Garden State Gardener. So we're just going to move it. Oh, both on a rock homestead. Thank you so much. Oh, and just guys, let you know, we have 4,030 hours on one app. But when YouTube looks at it, we still need like 300 hours to get monetized and uh, to get monetized for when people watch our videos. And if you guys want to help us in a way, when the commercials, when we do get monetized with the 4,000 hours, which we will let you know, um, watch the commercials because you get seven cents per commercial you watch. So that's how you get paid. Otherwise, if you watch this for two hours, you're not getting paid. It's just the way it is. It's all about the commercials. So, and, oh, cool. I've got my seeds today. I also got my MI Gardener order of 10% off and free shipping with hashtag grow big. So that is awesome. So use that 10%. Um, we're very lucky to have MI Gardener and Mary's Heirloom Seeds. Oh, Mary went live. She goes, just let you guys know, I, I shared it out. Um, Mary's Heirloom Seeds usually go 6 o'clock, then I go 7. So I was going 7. We'll start at eight. Messed that up, but Mary, she goes at uh, six o'clock uh, on Thursdays. So uh, check out Mary's Heirloom Seeds. And every time you buy Mary's Heirloom Seeds, no hashtag, just work grow big. We get a little piece of money every time somebody buys seeds from Mary's Heirloom Seeds. Uh, with and my gardener, we don't get anything. Um, I just been friends with Luke forever, and. Uh, I love the guy. I love his family. I love. I loved his parents. It, it's been an, a long journey. So, uh, God bless Luke. I'll do whatever I can to do to help him in any kind of way. Okay, Mary's yeah, Mary's heirloom seats five o'clock Central Time, and here at six o'clock exactly. So, and we're looking to have other sponsors for the channel. Um, so. Guys, that's it for today. I'm going to get this stuff out. Please send me your address to the winners. Uh, it's going to be, this Sunday is going to be 8 o'clock for Sunday fun day. It's only going to be one hour now. Uh, so, yes, we're in a Tuesday, uh, Thursdays, Mary Sirloom Seeds. So, uh, Sunday, we're only going for one hour on Sunday fun day this week. And then I'll be back to two hours for that show. And uh, I appreciate you guys all for your love and support in any which way you can. And, uh, yeah, thank you. God bless you guys. And hope to see you guys on Sunday. So hope you guys enjoyed this chat. And I uh, appreciate you guys. Take care.